Some of the hump day homers from week one. And now we go straight into week two, the power rankings. I put them out every Tuesday. We talk about them every Wednesday. Unchanged at the top, the Chiefs and the Lions. Cowboys get a big jump. I guess I had them too low at number 19. The Bengals take a plunge down to 14 from seven. And the Packers, without Jordan Love, for at least the next couple of games. He's back week four at the very earliest. Packers drop seven to number 10 miles. What jumps out to you as the biggest problem with the top half other than your Browns aren't on it? Uh, I mean, should they be on it? I mean, as long as the quarterback is still playing like that, I don't think they should be. Um, You know, I think that, and the defense obviously didn't look very good either. So I, I, I can't really quibble with you on that part of it. Um, I think you got the Buccaneers a little high, you know, I, I think I would probably have the bills and Texans above them, but you know what the bucks they had a really nice game um, like against the Washington commanders. So that is okay. Um, I also don't know that I would have the lions above the 49ers, frankly. I mean, I think that look, the lions are a great team. Yes. But I think that the 49ers is runner ups. They didn't show anything to me that would say that, They shouldn't still be the runner up. So you probably had them a little low to begin with if they moved up and they're only number three. So those are the things that stand out to me, at least at first. They were four going into the season just because of the whole Brandon Ayuk, Trent Williams. We don't know what's going on. Are they going to be ready? So they moved up with the win, but they didn't leapfrog the Lions. I had the Bucks leapfrog the Bills and the Texans because I thought their win was more impressive than what the Bills and Texans did. And then there's your back half. The Panthers would be lower than 32 if that was mathematically possible. The Panthers are clearly the worst team in the NFL right now, and there's no good way out of this for them anytime soon. And it's probably going to drive David Temper to either drink or throw drinks or both. Uh, I think it's probably the latter. What's interesting about the Panthers, and you know, I, I was on radio in Vegas yesterday talking about this. You know, they play the Chargers this week, and they lost Derek Brown. And if you're trying to, you know, get your put yourself together and all that, like you need to be able to stop the run if you're playing a Greg Roman offense, and you just lost your best defensive player and a guy that's huge and plays in the middle. Like, the, I, I don't know what the Chargers are going to do this week, but, like, if they don't run for 150 yards, I'm going to be surprised. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that at all, and I think the Panthers become that soft spot on everyone's schedule. And the question is, for how long will David Tepper cling to the guy he wanted last year, Bryce Young, hoping against yeah. hope that he finally becomes the guy that it's starting to look like He's never going to be. But then again, maybe the Panthers ruined him and maybe he goes somewhere else and he becomes a great player. We'll find out if and when that ever occurs. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.